All right, so the Saab 900, this is the plan for this redesign and the brief that I gave myself uh, when starting this project. So what we're gonna do first is make these lower body plastics into body color. Then I'm going to change the entire front, create some sort of more aggressive look in the front here and make it look more planted and modern by widening these fenders, both the rear and front and change the wheels of course and then obviously I'm gonna clean everything up and make it look a little bit more modern. I think I'm going to change the uh, the hood design right here because newer Saabs before they went bust they had some line that goes something like this as like a C down here that connects like that and th I think I'm gonna create something similar to that and then maybe you know tone the windows and do minor minor details like that and remove this air outlet or whatever this is in the rear that's about it so let's jump into the actual redesign of this car the first generation of the Saab 900 introduced in 1978 and was in production all the way up to 93 the most common models being the four-door version and the coupe and they later introduced a convertible and the results of this coach builder called uh, Nilsson who built this station wagon of the 900 and if you happen to see a ruby red 900 you have stumbled upon something unique because that would be the Saab 900 ruby which was specifically made for the UK market although Saab decided to make 15 versions that are left hand drive so if you see one of those that's definitely a unicorn. And they also created this cool camper called the Topola version of the Saab 900. And I really think it's cool that they made this because it looks so different from anything that you see on the roads today. All right, let's jump into the redesign of the Saab 900. So I wanted to create more, uh, more of an aggressive look for this Saab 900 and modernize the whole design. Start here by not using the airbrush, which I normally do. I started by blocking out the front part of this car to kind of remove the things that I know I'm not going to be using such as the front bumper and the black plastic parts. As I mentioned in the uh, intro, I wanted this car to be one single color and not have any old school black plastics at the lower parts of this car. So that's that was kind of the first thing that I, that I did. And I also wanted to widen the fenders of this car, not make it Liberty Walk wide, but at the same time I wanted to make it as wide to uh, as modern cars they have wider fenders and they don't have these flat fenders that just sits uh, in line with the rest of the body you have fenders that actually pop up pop pop out and that's kind of what i wanted to to visualize here work some on the grill and also redesign the uh, the hood as i said before in the intro i wanted to have it more modern and if you look at the uh, i think it's sob 95 the last 95 that they I, they produced it was the last car that they actually manufactured they have this hood and I wanted to incorporate that in this design and as always you got to keep your light source on point so if I have a surface for example this little uh, line or edge that I'm sketching right now that edge is facing forward so I need to find some place on the car that is facing in the same direction and then I just copy that shade of red and paint with that to create the same kind of light all over the uh, to have the light be consistent in this sketch and I wasn't really happy with the uh, amount of widening of the fenders that I started with so I created I, I copied the fenders and moved them out to create an even wider look of the car and uh, I'm gonna fill that in later on to uh, make it blend in with the rest of the car. When you're sketching like this, there's a lot of experimenting to see what, what works and what doesn't. So you put down a lot of big areas with airbrush or the hard brush, and then you erase and kind of uh, sculpt whatever it is you're trying to do and see what sticks and what doesn't. And it's very easy to do this in Photoshop because you have so many different layers to play around with. If you feel insecure about some part of this of the car or you're still in the experiment stage, all you gotta do is just create a new layer. And if that doesn't work out, all you gotta do then is just to delete that layer and start all over again. And I, I did that a few times, especially later on with this front black part. I have to fill that in with some sort of graphics and intakes and uh, some part body parts that I want in there 
because I don't want it to be just a black massive hole. And I did that by creating a bunch of different layers and see what kind of design language I wanted in there until I found something that sticks. And then you can keep on working on those details of that final design and start adding highlights and shading and so on. I found these wheels that I really liked. I think they suit this design and this car. Uh, generally, black and red work very well together. So these black wheels, I think they work really well with this red Saab design. And this is still early in the sketch, so I'm going to come back, of course, and refine all the details. Right now, I'm just putting all the major features of this car that I want in place. And then, when I'm happy with that, I can go back in and integrate everything and make it look like it's actually part of this car. Now, as you know, all of my designs are the way that I would like this specific car to look like. If I owned a Saab 900, this is exactly my dream uh, design of how I would want it to be. The building part of it is obviously a completely different uh, subject if it's actually possible to build something like this, but I don't care about that stuff. That's up to the engineers. Just as I did when I worked as a designer, I just left the boring parts to the engineers and focused on making things look cool. And that worked out sometimes, but oftentimes the, the designs that, that you make as a, as a designer, they get engineered, as I call it which means that they lose pretty much all the coolness and the fun stuff uh, of the design and they just focus on manufacturing capabilities and budgets and all of that boring stuff that I don't really care about. This is what I was talking about earlier to create different, a bunch of different layers just to play around with uh, the design of the front or whatever part you're having some issues with. You just create new layers, you have an unlimited uh, number of layers, so why not just throw out a bunch of them and create different designs until we find something that you're happy with. And once you're happy with that, you can start to refine the design and uh, create even more layers if you want to do that. So the, the, the um, technique that I, the layer technique that I use is just, I like, I don't like to have a uh, hundred different layers as if I get to a certain point and I feel that I'm happy with the, the design up until this point, what I do is just merge the layers. So I create maybe put 20 layers into one layer and then I have that as the base and I go from there to create different designs from that point on. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, I am working on this tutorial. I haven't forgot about the, uh, the tutorials uh, that I'm going to be doing for car designs like this in Photoshop. And in those tutorials that will be here on YouTube, I'm going to explain all of this stuff in more detail so that you can actually start doing these designs yourself if that's what you want to do. We're going to take a car, whatever car, I don't know yet, some, some cool car, uh, and not really focus on the design part as much as uh, the techniques on how to, how to use the brushes and how to use the tools. So we're going to make a step-by-step -step tutorial, maybe three videos, maybe two videos, I, I'm not sure yet but cover everything that you want to know about it so uh, so you have everything ready to go. And I'm really excited to share that with you. That's coming up probably within uh, four weeks or so, within a month. Now back to this redesign. What I'm doing right now is just finishing up some details such as the wheels. I wanted to add some tire uh, the, so you can see the tire around the wheel even though it's uh, on the far side. You still need to have some rubber visible on the other side of this rim. And also this, as you know, is one of my favorite parts with sketching these cars is to add these white burn points and highlights. And I do that right here, just using a pressurized brush. Very, very simple, but very, very effective as well in uh, just creating this realistic look to the whole render. Wherever I have uh, uh, light surfaces, that's usually where you're gonna have a uh, highlight as well. It's very simple. It's a, uh, it's, uh, it's an easy way to think of it, to just think of uh, where you already have the light hitting the body. And if you have any edges or corners or end points within that light area, that's where you want to add those burn points to the, to the sketch. And now I'm cleaning up the side of this car. I want to, whenever I do these renders, I want to go over as much as possible of the bodywork. So I almost have nothing of the original left. Uh, at least with some airbrush just to make uh, the original, the, the blurriness of the original image kind of disappear and uh, rebuild it up with my own sketching and painting. 
and that's what I did there on the side. And same thing here, I'm working on the rear wheel to make it look correct in perspective. And also adding some uh, burn points and highlights to that rim as well. So mo most, most times when I do these renders, I uh, come back to it after a while. I take a break, I go and have a coffee or something. And then I come back and uh, look at it again. Usually that's how you see what's wrong with it and what you can improve and what's missing and so on. And that happened a few times here. I came back, I'm gonna change the uh, front, um, the black part in the front. I wanna add some, some chamfer to that part, which I'm gonna do right here soon. And also I'm gonna add this lower, uh, I guess you could call it side skirt. It's a side skirt down there. And also some front corner splitters. I think that's what they're called. I'm gonna wrap around the whole bottom of the car, make it lower to the ground. And also, of course, it looks cool. It just <laughs> looks cool to add these things on there. So that's why I like to do it. They might not have the, uh, the you know, they might not be super functional, but uh, I don't care about that. As I said before, I just care about making things look cool. And that's the whole point with these corner splitters right here. And as you know, the more stuff you add, the more highlights and shading you need to add as well. You can't just leave something. You, you have to have a standard for how you sketch things. And every single part that, you're, that you sketch need to be uh, up to that standard. So you can't leave a tiny detail untouched when it comes to highlights, for example. Right now, this is also one of my favorite parts to do. I have a lot of favorite parts when it comes to sketching. So this is the overlay layer. So I just go over it and make it look nice and shiny. Uh, this is also one of the things that I'm going to talk about in this mini course that I'm going to drop uh, later on. There are a few things like this that uh, I do specifically, which is my style, but I'm going to share that with... Uh, I'm going to share all of those tiny details with you. So if you want to use them, you can. If you don't, you can just skip them and maybe figure out some own tips and tricks for your own sketches. This is what I was talking about earlier. I want to come back. I took a break and I wanted to come back and create this chamfer on this black part because I, I think it just looks more interesting and uh, it looks like a uh, kind of a bumper, a uh, bumper that sits within the, the, the bumper, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, same thing here, going back and making some details. I wanted to, the, the wheels kind of looked a little bit off at some points and I was coming back to them every now and then to just uh, modify them a little bit and make them, uh, make them correct in perspective and from our viewpoint, make them look good. Also adding some, uh, some strong uh, reflections to the windscreen or the windshield. Uh, and also going to turn the lights on because I like to do that. Uh, and you know the reason why, it looks cool. Just to add some uh, blue uh, light in there and make them look like they're actually turned on. Found some cool mesh that I wanted to put in the front grill. And that's what I'm doing right here. Have to make it fit in perspective, same thing here. I have to make everything uh, be correct in perspective and uh, suit the car. And that's pretty easy to do. It's not, not too complicated if you have some basic perspective knowledge. And this is the before and after. We have done our, uh, let's call it the Sketch Monkey Edition Saab 900. There are so many editions of this, so this might as well be the Sketch Monkey Edition. I'm very happy with this result. I think it turned out really cool looking, way better than I expected it to be. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do this. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm the Sketch Monkey, and if you have any questions, just comment below. If you like this kind of videos, hit the like button. If you disliked it, as always, hit the dislike button. And if you like this kind of videos in general, feel free to subscribe. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.